In this lecture or discussion, I'm going to be explaining some of the most common martial body misconceptions. When I was coming up with this system of training, this, this conceptual approach to developing body method, it, I hit a lot of misconceptions and I continue to do so. These misconceptions are usually born out of similar exercises that people have seen before and their goals and objectives. They come from people's previous or current experience, things that they're training at the moment. And a general applic application of what I call box thinking. <clears throat> it, it seems like this, so it must be that. This uh, throws up a few problems for people who are trying to learn or trying to develop their, their martial body, as I would call it, because they sometimes will misunderstand the goals and objectives of the system itself and the process of training the individual attributes and their associated skills. So let's go through some of the most common misconceptions when it comes to martial body training. So first we have the uh, the idea that the online material is all of the material. Um, I've experienced a few people come to me and say uh, this is the system or, or claim to understand what the system is all about. The online material represents the most basic beginner training and the intermediate level training. That's as far as it's going to go. In fact, when I'm training individually with people and training personal clients and uh, athletes, the training is quite different to the online material because it is tailored individually to that specific person and their goals and objectives. So as a system, the martial body method is not contained within a specific set of techniques. It is an approach to developing the attributes of the martial body in the person that's in front of you. And that may well be that that person requires a completely different set of exercises and training methods to another person who you might be training. So the online material represents the most basic and the most simple work so that it can be taught online. There are many areas of martial body that require um, a bit more detail and that detail is often most off, mo best put, put across when you're in front of someone. Okay, So the first misconception is that the online material is the totality of the system. That's, that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, the, it is the smaller proportion of the system. Um, <clears throat> now the second one, this is a really, really big one, and I, I hit this a lot, Okay, and that martial body is what is some people call internal power training. Now, I think this stems from the fact that previously I was training in what are called the internal martial arts, the, the arts of Tai Chi, Xing Yi, and Ba Gua, and I trained them very uh, in depth. And uh, I developed a, a, an intermediary system between those traditional arts and martial body, which I called internal power training. And the reason that I moved away from that naming convention is that I felt that it was too uh, constrictive about the goals and objectives that I personally thought uh, were represented in the various martial artists that I saw. It couldn't be claimed that uh, the UFC fighter that I trained with was a internal power person, but they certainly had a massive amount of skill. And in, in truth, they would probably beat up most of the internal guys that I've met. Um, Similarly, the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu world champions that I've trained with and continue to train with, or the Judoka uh, internationals, or the Aikido people, or the, the, you know, the various Silat or Sistema, many of these people wouldn't classically be called internal power people. They were extraordinarily skilled martial artists with some of the martial body attributes in abundance. And so the martial body system was an attempt and is an attempt to encompass all of that into a, a logical and a systematic approach to developing body skill. Now there are certain aspects of martial body that fit into the traditional internal power training uh, paradigm. Things like um, release, things like uh, connection, things like spiraling. These things are very well represented in internal power. But there are many things that are not 
related to internal power. Things like the agility found in the elastic body training, where we're looking at very fast footwork, we're working with lightness. These sorts of things are not traditionally very well represented in uh, the internal power group. Much more, uh, who are much more relevant to sort of rooting and, and solidity, these sorts of things. There are also areas of, of martial body training, especially when I'm training with individuals from specific sports, let's say, that um, really do not relate to, to internal training whatsoever. Things like action and reaction drills, mobility drills and uh, agility drills. All of this side of martial body is not at all relevant to uh, what would classically be called internal power training. So when we look at the system, if we put it into that internal power box, we're missing probably 50% of what I actually teach in martial body, which is, is not related to that type of training at all. Okay, so that's one of the biggest misconceptions about martial body is that it is a repackaging of internal power training. That's not true in, in, in the largest sense of the word because although there are aspects of that which are very, very useful for certain attributes, there is also a massive amount of the system that does not relate to this whatsoever. Okay, uh, misconception number three, it must be felt. This is something that uh, a lot of the internal power people go bang on about and for their systems, I completely agree. If you are working with um, internal power stuff on its own, then a lot of the work that you do is related to push testing, feeling what the more skilled exponents that you work with are able to do, and then trying to replicate that in yourself. But there is a huge amount of work in the internal power world and in uh, martial body specifically that does not need to be felt. It is developmental in its nature. To say it would need to be felt would be like saying if you are training with someone who is a personal trainer, you would have to feel their body when they're doing a deadlift to understand how to do a deadlift. And that clearly is not the case. That is the same concept with a lot of martial body, remembering that it is not internal power training. So although there are partner training drills and we're aiming to do certain things, in the vast majority of cases, the work that is presented online specifically, remembering that that is not all of the system, does not need to be felt. It is solo training with good details that allows you to create development and benefit from the, the solo training that we undertake. This is, has proved true time and again. I have students all over the world and many of them get in touch with me to say that after six months of training, they are seeing big differences and their, uh, their, their peers at their martial art or whatever they do are also noticing big differences. If it had to be felt, then that would not be the case. It they would not see any progression in their body method. So this is uh, um, not relevant to martial body training and we have to look at things in, from the correct perspective to get the right idea about what we're trying to do. We are trying to develop six attributes to develop what I call the martial body. Part of that is what would classically be called internal power, but a large proportion of it is not that. And so there's plenty of stuff that we can do um, to develop what I call the martial body, which will develop something that is very distinct to people who classically train internal power. Then the, the two are not the same. And we have to remember that. So must be felt is a misconception. Four, it is a martial art unto itself. I think I do a quite a good job of explaining that that is not the case. And in upcoming lectures, you will see that I, I do uh, very much focus that martial body is not a martial art at all. And it does not aim to teach you how to do martial arts. There is no aspect of martial body that is trying to do that. Martial body is very much a supplementary training re regimen or regime that can assist the martial artist in developing certain attributes. That's exactly what it is, and it is no more. So it is not a martial art. Okay, it is a static system. This is another massive misconception, and it stems from traditional thinking. 
So in most martial arts, traditional martial arts especially, there is a set syllabus. We, uh, from Daitoru, for instance, which is a Japanese style of jiu-jitsu that I studied, there were uh, a series of techniques that we needed to learn to progress through the system. Uh, that is true of many, many different martial arts. And those techniques are sort of set in stone. They're on scrolls, they're on certificates. They are the techniques of the system. Martial body is not like that at all. And in fact, it is much more like the uh, personal training uh, sphere of, of development. If you think about a personal trainer, they, if they're very good, they will be constantly looking at new and improved ways to produce good results for the athlete in front of them or the individual in front of them. And that constant evolution and change is what makes the system of personal training effective. And similarly in martial body, although we have some foundational techniques that are useful to learn, especially in the online material, the actual system itself is completely fluid. If a new thing comes into my awareness as a coach of martial body, and I feel like it can help my student, I will be adopting that way of doing it. It's, no, it's not a set in stone system, it shouldn't be thought of as that, and it is not re related to that traditional martial arts way of thinking of here is the syllabus. Instead, the only goal is the production of the six attributes and the martial body, and anything that we can do to improve our progress towards that goal is adopted. So we need to get out of that that static system, traditional thinking mindset and more into that personal training, uh, personal um, uh, PT kind of exploration of the new ideas, constantly searching and researching better ways to produce that martial body. Okay, and, and that sort of leads into the final misconception. Uh, and this is the misconception of the individual who is viewing martial body. Okay, this is what I call box thinking and expectations. So when we're training martial body, or if you, if let's say you get the beginner's course, which is a, a six week program, you may fire up that and look at the techniques, go, ah, oh, I've done all of these before. That is what I call box thinking or expectation thinking. The expectation is I've done that before, I know what it does, and I know what the results are. That is, that, of course that's useful sometimes, but if we're looking at a, a new system like martial body, which is, it incorporates obviously older techniques, but the, the goal and objective is to layer techniques together to produce a result. So even though you may have seen technique A and E and, and V, all of those techniques in between that, that are being demonstrated, that are t being taught in those short sessions in that beginner course, are progressions through the, the body so that at the end you feel a real difference. So the, the box thinking is to think, I've seen that before, I don't need to think about how to do it. Instead, approaching with the viewpoint of, I'm gonna practice this for 60 days and just see what happens, even though I've done it before. That's what I call a, an open thinking mindset rather than a box thinking mindset. And what that can do is, tell you definitively if you are honestly training it, if you're honestly working on it, does it make the difference that it claims to? And I'm 100% confident that if you train heavy body, for instance, uh, my first course in the martial body system looks a bit aged now, but the techniques are very solid. If you train that for six weeks, you will notice a definitive difference. And that's all that matters to me when it comes to the martial body system. It doesn't matter whether you've seen the technique before. Have you trained it for six weeks and does it make a difference? So that's the, the, the final sort of common misconception is that box thinking mindset. I know what I've done before. I, I'm looking at this and, it, and it's the same as something I, I learned 10 years ago, but I haven't even trained. If you follow the, the programs and you train, and you actually work, like the people who come to see me for private training, the changes happen whether you have done them or not, whether you've done the technique before or not. And that is the open mindset that we need to have when we're approaching uh, martial body training in general. So these are some of the most common misconceptions about martial body training. I hope that that 
clears up a little bit the way in which I view the system that I've created and that you can view the system. When it comes to coaching the system and bringing, um, soon I'm going to be bringing on coaches and training people to coach this system, it's important that we know and we have this reference as to what people will come to us with as a misconception. And these are the most common ones that I see. Okay, so I hope that's very useful for you and uh, that you, you, you are, have a better impression about Marshall Body now and um, I will catch you in the next session.